Hello, I'm Monica and welcome to my September wrap up. And first of all, I do really want to say thank you for all those who have subscribed to my channel and we hit 100 subscribers last week, I think, and it's been really exciting and I've been putting a lot more effort into uploading and making videos. So I hope we can continue this little bookish community and I just want to say thank you for all those who were supporting and liking my videos. So in September, I did end up reading six books, even though I did say in the title, <laughs> I wish I read more. But out of those six books, I think the average page count was like over 400 pages. So I did read a lot of pages. <laughs> This month, I also did upload quite a lot of reading logs and I'll link those in the description down below and I'll mention which books have a reading blog associated with them. Let's just get right to the first book I read this month and that was Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is a YA fantasy and I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars. In this book, we're following Zaina Faro who is a 90 year old orphan and with each of her guardians, they all mysteriously die. After her latest guardian's death, Signa is sent to Thorn Grove to live with her relatives, the Hawthorns. Signa notices that spirits haunt the house and that her aunt Lilith might not have only died but also might have been poisoned. But the only thing that Signa desires to be is to learn how to be a proper lady in society and try to have a somewhat normal life. However, Signa is pulled into solving her aunt's death and meanwhile she does have true death with a capital D always lingering nearby her. Our main character is running out of time because her cousin is also coming down with a mysterious illness and she's dying. Belladonna captured my attention right from the first page and the world is so easy to fall into, the writing is so immersive and also atmospheric and gothic. The pacing was perfect to highlight the intrigue and the murder mystery that we were involved in. It was really fun to follow Signa be like a detective trying to figure out clues and she also has to deal with um, growing powers from death himself. So Signa is able to see spirits, she's also unable to die, and she can also kill with her touch. And the absolute highlight of this book for me was the relationship between Signa and death because this is what I imagine um, the relationship of Addie LaRue and Luke to be if it went a different way in Addie LaRue. But Signa and Death's relationship was one that I was pleasantly surprised by because Death himself is alluring, mysterious, and also quite charismatic, and he gives off lonely immortal vibes. And I was quite happy with how the relationship progressed, and I'm really excited for the sequel Foxglove. And I would say Belladonna is really a great cozy and spooky read for the fall season. And onto my next book I read was The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the third and final book in the Inheritance Games trilogy and I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars. So this YA mystery series is a whole lot of fun with a lot of puzzles and mind games and I was really happy to sit back and let the characters do the work for me. If you don't know what the series is about, Avery is a teenager who becomes an heiress to billions overnight and she encounters a lot of rich people who really wants that inheritance instead. For the final gambit, I did post a spoiler filled reading vlog and a inheritance game series review and I'll link them in the description and I think the reading block up in the eye. Some quick thoughts about the last book. The mystery and the puzzles were taken to a new level. They had many layers and it took intricate strategies to solve them and with our main character Avery still being her really smart self, she was quite able to do that. And Avery also is chasing down the new antagonist for this book which was quite obvious to me who the antagonist was. But I do give huge credit to the author for creating all of these unique puzzles for three books. I think that's not easy and I really give her a lot of credit. So the final book does continue right off from where book two ended and we're leading up to the weeks of when Avery can actually get the inheritance. Avery does have quite noticeable growth from book one and how she now can stand as her own force against anyone who is defiant against her. The romance drama is always fun to read about and it was quite obvious from book one who Avery would choose as her romance interest and their relationship is quite sweet. We also see the Hawthorne brothers grow in this book as well and we get to see more of the reason why Jameson and 
Grayson are the way they are. And overall, this was quite a satisfying ending to the overall series and I was happy about it. And my next book is a second book in a series, is The Ballad and Never After by Stephanie Gerber. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. It is now a trilogy. I just saw on Goodreads that this is not the last book and that there will be a third book, which I am so excited about. I rated Ballad a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I did upload a spoilery reading vlog as well as a full review of Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad Never After because at that point in time when I was filming that video, I did not know that there was going to be a book 3 but I do have more in-depth thoughts in that video as well and I'll link that in the description. But back to Ballad, this book, the ending, it made me cry and it really broke my heart into a million pieces. Ballad does continue from where book one ended. We learn about a lot of new curses, new adventures, and also new prophecies and fairy tales. And of course, there was great romance development in the sequel. This one definitely reads more as a fantasy romance than book one did and I was so happy about it. Evangeline and Jax have way more page time together than in book one and every moment I love them. Jax is still the morally great love interest and Evangeline is still falling for him. Jack still has some questionable actions towards Evangeline but he does have a strange undertone of caring for her as well. <laughs> Maybe he does. But also with Jax we learn more about his origin, where he came from, and where his magic comes from. I did want more clarity on his magic though but with Evangeline he, she also has more character growth She's not as naive as in book one and she takes matters into her own hands a lot and she's a lot more assertive. But Evangeline still has her big heart and that is one of the reasons why I still really love her as a character. Even though people betray her, she still kind of holds on to her own love for life and being kind to others. But this ending, it was shocking, it was bittersweet and I cried and I do know that with book three that will be coming out I'm so excited to see more of Jax and Evangeline. I don't know what will happen in that one and how that could possibly resolve what happened at the end of this one but this ending of book two it did fit in with all the fairy tales and the ballads and myths that are mentioned in this book that they don't all have happy endings and I will definitely be waiting in anticipation for book three. And my next YA fantasy book that I did read is one that I finally managed to get to and that was Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This book, I loved it. I gave it five out of five stars. I will be uploading a reading vlog for Legendborn as well. If you didn't know what Legendborn is about, so we're following Bree Matthews who is in an early college program. But on her first night on campus, she witnesses a flying magical demon attack and lo and behold, there's a secret society who hunts down these demons and Bree herself does want to join this secret society because she thinks that her mother's death has a connection to these legendborn people. And there's a lot to cover in this book and I will have a full more in-depth review of Legendborn and Bloodmarked coming out soon. But for now, these are my overall thoughts on Legendborn. The magic system in this world isn't really overly complicated and I really loved how the author used like a retelling of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table into her entire story. And I really loved how the magic is visually quite bright and I think it would translate really well onto the screen. So if there is an adaptation of this coming out, I would be really happy to watch it. Personally, I really love lore and the backstory of magic, so when it's really well done, I gave it a lot of praise. Also, with a dark academia setting, we're at a university, there's demons running around, a magical war happening, and a potential murder mystery, and overall, I just loved all of those things tossed into this book. And onto the characters, Brie, our main character, she is strong, defiant, observant, and stubborn. But Brie also is really in tune with her emotions and especially when dealing with the grief of her mother's death just three months ago. And she's grappling with that and it's really difficult for her. And Brie herself is the definition of black girl magic. She is learning that she has powers and abilities quite early on. 
and with everything that's happening around her and discovering this secret society it's a lot for her and we also have nick who is a stand-up guy he goes against the tradition of the order but sometimes he can be reactive at times and our third main character is selwyn or sel who is a really powerful mage he loves a good fight and he also has anger issues because of childhood traumas after reading through legendborn i kind of realized that the three main characters brie nick and sel they all have a common theme i would say of them grappling with past and current traumas and trying to heal from everything happening to them their relationships and friendships are quite complex in this book and there is multiple layers to them but i loved reading all of the dynamics between each of the pairings although that this book is 500 pages it did not read as 500 pages there is incredible payoff i loved every part of this book and there are some topics that are being discussed in this book such as racism discrimination slavery colonialism and also grief and trauma and the author did an amazing job at interweaving all of these topics together into a YA fantasy book that is also dealing with magic and supernatural creatures it was just really well crafted and written and of course we also have brilliant poc and lgbtq plus rep in this book and for brie herself what i want to see from her is holding more of her own with her magical abilities and especially after the ending of book one i hope that brie will continue to show great strength in the upcoming books and essentially i just really love this one and i also managed to read another huge book this month and it was the sequel to legendborn i read bloodmark by tracy dion and i rated this one a five out of five stars as well and i did get a net galley e arc of this book so thank you net galley and i will also be uploading a spoiler filled vlog for bloodmarked but that will be out when the book is released because i don't want to release too many spoilers before the release date and i will link that when it's available i won't say too many spoilers here but i will mention that brie in book two still struggles with her power learning to control her abilities but she is learning quite well and making developments there there's a lot more demon attacks and we're dealing with the mysterious regions in book two after the events of book one some characters are separated and we get more discovery of who's loyal to brie and who's not loyal to her and also those of you who really like brie and Cell, there is some good development there there is one particular scene that comes to mind with brie i think it's like in part one or part two of this book brie in this moment really tells her truth and telling it how it is like how the reality of things are i'm so happy that she did that even though the reaction might not be what we expect but i think it's quite aligned to what the order is about there's also a lot more exploration in-depth exploration about brie's magic and where exactly that comes from and the personal connections that are happening to brie about her magic it goes really in depth and i love how everything comes together in the end similar to the ballad and ever after ending the ending of bloodmarked a lot happens and i'm not okay and i need book three now and yes i think it's quite obvious from the events of book two there is set up for a third book so <sighs> I can't wait for all these books to come out okay and for my last book of september i read another last book in a series and that is kingdom of the feared by Kara Maniscalco, the last and third book of the kingdom of the wicked trilogy this one i rated it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and i also did upload a spoilery reading log for kingdom of the feared first i do want to say that we do need to see more new adult books in the publishing industry and this series really definitely falls into that category with this book so if you don't know what this series is about we're following amelia a witch who accidentally summons a prince of hell wrath and she wants his help to solve her twin sister's murder right off the bat kingdom of the fear gave me exactly what i wanted from the romance aspect between amelia and wrath we got a lot more spicy scenes 
Overall, I really liked the exploration of the other prince of hell's domains and interactions with the other princes of hell. And it's overall a really nice resolution to the entire series. But I did have issues with the pacing was one. Um, it was quite disjointed when there were certain scenes that were reading along and then boom, we're jumping into another scene that just kind of pulls you out of your immersion and it's like, okay, um, what's happening here? And I also really didn't like how Amelia, the main character, was quite indifferent to a lot of changes that are happening to her own identity and learning about truths about herself. Like she didn't seem she cared and then in turn, I didn't really care for those revelations that happened. So I was wanting more reaction from Amelia. But the winning moments of this book were Wrath and Amelia for me. Their relationship grew quite strong and I really like how they accept each other for who they are. Overall, this conclusion was quite satisfying to me, but I just wanted more smoother scene transitions and more understandable character development. But other than that, I still enjoyed the series. It was fun. And I think that's all the books that I read this month. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below to not miss any future uploads. And also ring the bell to be notified. And I'll see you all in my next video.